Well, the uh, stage, you notice, looks a little different. And um, there's been a lot of preparation, and there's a lot of people I'd like to say thank you for all your hard work for starting to get these things done. And um, I'd like for you to continue to be praying for the things that's about to come up. If you got your Bibles, I ask you to open up your Bibles to Psalms chapter 51. And as you turn there, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you. And Father, uh, we need you more than ever. And Father, there's been a lot of things that we've done here around the church getting ready for this crusade that's about to come and reach a lot of people, Father. But Lord, I just pray that it's reached and touches hearts for your glory and for your honor and your kingdom, not for man. Father, may you hold our hands and lead us in the ways in which we need to go. Father, may no one see or hear me tonight, Father, but they see and hear you. Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Psalms chapter 51, I want you to look at a, a couple verses, starting in verse 10. It says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. It's pretty neat when David wrote uh, Psalms 51, there was a lot that was happening in his life. There was a lot of things that David had messed up and had done and he was realizing his mistakes. One of the prophets had come and confronted him. And David was dealing inside with some of the things when he wrote Psalms 51. But you notice here lately, we've had a lot of people in our church getting sick. We've had a lot of people having heart procedures. And I was doing, a, I came across an article the, uh, not too long ago, and uh, I, I thought it was kind of funny. And I thought, um, I may need to hold on to this. And when I came across this passage for tonight, I thought about this little article. And I want to read it to you. It says, here is Chief Flab's recipe for a deadly breakfast. And uh, I, I like breakfast. But uh, needless to say, uh, I, I probably don't follow this recipe to the 100%, and it's a good thing. But here's the recipe. Take one pound of bacon, cook it until it's crispy. Do not pour off the excess fat. Fry or scramble a dozen eggs. Make a dozen pancakes. Cover it, each one with a stick of butter. Serve it with several bottles of syrup. Eat it all real quickly. Wash it down with two gallons of whole milk. Top it all off with a dozen chocolate-covered donuts. Wash it down with two pots of strong coffee with plenty of cream and sugar. Now that is a deadly recipe for breakfast. Amen. And if you know that if you ate this for a few days, you would feel pretty gross. You'd feel yucky, probably groggy. And if you kept this up for a year, you would probably clog up all your arteries in your heart and you would die. But you see, those are physical things into our physical body that we partake and we allow to come into us day in and day out. And we're not realizing the harm that is happening to our physical body. We have several people that we know in our families or friends or, or acquaintances that have had heart procedures. And they talk about with the heart and with all the arteries and all the things getting clogged up and all these different things. Some of it is genetics, but some of it is our diet. And one of the things we have to realize is God designed our physical and our spiritualness. And one of the things that we can notice about the two is they go hand in hand. He designed them the same. One thing that you notice, anyone that builds or creates something, and you look and say, so-and-so built that. And you go down the road and they might have built something else. You may say, well, so-and-so must have built that because it looks a lot like it. 
You can tell, you can see the craftsmanship in someone's work. They always do it similar because this is the way they see it, the way they construct it. And God did the same thing with you and me. And as another kind of heart problem David was dealing with in Psalms 51. David wrote Psalms 51 after he committed adultery with another man's wife. And he had committed a crime. He had had the woman, the woman's husband killed. And pretty soon he had started feeling guilty about this. And David had to start asking God for forgiveness. Do you realize the actions of which David did and the, the things of which responded after his actions and it all collected, it started affecting his spiritualness. If life and it started affecting his relationship with God because it wasn't right. The same thing when we put a lot of na nasty food or things in our bodies that we shouldn't, it makes our health unhealthy. Well, David's spiritual life was very unhealthy at this time. And David realized he had to start asking God for forgiveness. And in Psalms 51 there, at that first verse, it's created me a clean heart, O God. And then if you notice at the last part I read, it says, renew a steadfast spirit within me. He's telling him to change his heart, his spiritualness heart, make it new. The same thing when we've done harm to our physical heart, we need the doctors to help make it new that we can continue to live. Well, David wanted to continue to live with his relationship with God. And he knew God had to create a new heart inside of him. But then he needed to adjust his spirit. Some things I'd like for you to think about as we're looking at this is, Praying to God and asking Him forgiveness is a form of spiritual surgery. We allow God to have permission to reach down into our heart and to cut out that wickedness, that sin, and that filth. The same thing when we damage our physical heart, the doctors go in and cut and, and remove the parts that need to be removed. It's clear that all sin gunks, all sin and gunk in our lives, it causes separation between us and God. So you can have it clean and have a clean conscience and a new lease on life and a new vision from God when you confess your sins, confess the things that you know that are there that you need to be adjusted. Everyone sins. But it, can't, but it can be forgiven. Go to God and confess your sins. The things that we ask Him for is a, to clean up our lives and to give us a new heart. When was the last time you asked God to give you a new heart? If it's been a while, it may be time to ask God to start creating inside of you the new, clean heart. It's the best way to do heart surgery is allowing God to touch it Himself. Let's pray. God.